But lo and behold, after a long time, eventually I'm back with a new episode on our TEF 20, a restoration of this 20. A huge amount of people are always messaging me about this little tractor. Adrian, when are you going to get back to working on this tractor? I did get time and not enough time. I could have walked away on this without being on the camera and got a load of work done. I probably would have had it nearly finished. But that's not what this was all about. I wanted to share it all with you guys, and well, as much of it as I can. So I don't like starting a job if you're always thinking about you have to be somewhere else or rushing because there's no fun in that. So guys that are restoring tractors kind of understand probably what I mean. I like to take me time when I'm doing something and that way I can do it right because when I'm in a rush, I completely fall apart. That is just the simple fact of it. So we're back at the tractor anyway. I'm wearing a jacket, a hoodie, a t-shirt. Oh, I'm packed with clothes here at the minute because it's extremely cold. We're just after having a storm here. And now we've got a real cold front, so it's cold. But we're in the cabin pen now because it's actually well sheltered here. But it is a nice wee comfortable spot to work. So what are we going to do today? Well, Bailey moves out of the way slightly here first and Hudson quits trying to eat out of the buckets. A few things have been done since the last we were here. I'm trying just to remember back now. But I, these mud guards were on, but I didn't have the lights on. They're a butler light that I just bought online. I like them. I like the little light. I also have a plow lamp that will be going on a roll bar when we have a fitted. The plow lamp might be over here somewhere. It is. There's there. Grey. Ready to go. We have a couple of other bits and pieces as well here got that has to go on. A lovely trip. Freewheeling it down from the yard above. It felt good. Just freewheeling it down, getting sitting on it, getting a kind of an experience. Because believe it or not, I've been around machinery my whole life, but I've never drove a tractor without a cab. And people tell you it's a great experience, and I can see what they mean, because even coming down there, just sitting on it, it's nice, it's hard to explain. You'll hear the engine ticking over, hopefully, when it's done, and it'll all add to the effect. So the first thing we're going to do today now is we're going to take off these back wheels, and we're going to overhaul these back brakes. So let's just get straight into it and see how we get on. Okay, hold on a second. Do you see a problem there? There's a stud missing. There's two flat heads here supposed to be here to take this hub off. That hub's loose as well. But look at that's what you get with these old tractors. People pull bits and pieces out, put them on other tractors and that's it, or pull them apart and don't put them back together, right? I'm gonna have to remove this stud here and then take this hub off. Hopefully we won't have to loosen the tension. Does the yoke here for loosening the tension on the actual brake shoes? We mightn't have to do that because I'd say they're fairly well worn down and we get this off. There's a lot of chisel marks. Someone has chiseled this to get it off before. Oh, look at it. It's just hanging there. Well, that's a good thing for me. At least it comes off. All right, will this be a task? Nope, obviously not. The brakes actually look quite good on this. They're really, really clean. I am going to change them because they could be gone hard from just sitting. But someone has went in here and done these brakes not that terribly long ago because everything looks fairly fresh. But look, at someone has done the bit of tool time, which is good. It shows that the tractor was kind of half maintained. But we're going to go ahead regardless and change this all out and be done with it. And at least we'll not have to dress it again. So I've all laid out, that's the first thing I've done, laid out all the new parts, the new springs, the new shoes. And just matching everything up so I know where everything goes. It looks fairly straightforward. I suppose the biggest thing is getting these springs off. Probably could use a cable tie. Some people use a cable tie to pull them on. And just cut your cable tie then when you have it done. We'll see how we get on. We'll loosen these two bolts off here first anyway. And that'll loosen out the two shoes. And then we'll work on these springs. There we go. Okay, that's that. I'm going to our brake shoes. Off. That should just sit there, like that. Nope. 
take it in. So, back to the old screwdriver. Probably not the wise thing to be at, but hey, look, it's on. Look at I'm learning as I go along, but I think I'm pretty much all right so far. Everything looks in the right place. That's a pretty basic hub. It kind of reminds me of working on motorbikes years ago when you had a hub similar to that, or even a car trailer. It'd be very, very similar inside. Uh, another thing, just before you put it back on, just check the inside of your hub here to make sure everything's all right. This one here is pretty clean. I don't see any reason to have to do anything with that. It looks pretty, pretty good. I might actually run a bit of brake cleaner around it actually now, and I am talking about it. Be no harm, just to clean that up. Maybe get a bit of wire wool or something, something really, really light. Scotch Bright, that's the word I was looking for. I'm gonna be cleaning it up just to keep it nice and clean, but mine looks pretty good. I will get some brake cleaner actually now, because there is bits of grime there I can see. And just clean that off, we'll put it on. First of all, I run it with brake cleaner, and then I came along with the power washer actually and put a degreaser on it and run it with that. It's an awful lot cleaner than what it was. I'm just gonna run around now with the blowtorch, just dry off the surface inside here. Then we're gonna put it back on. Keeping it in here with my hand so it grabs. And we're on. Oh, it's close. There we are. Now I'm not going to put you through that again. It's the very same thing on the other side, just exactly the same as what we did there. We'll pick it up when we've that side done. Another little mistake I made was when I put all these bricks on, I went through all the boxes, made sure I had all the kit here in front of me so I wouldn't leave anything behind. Well, I didn't check all the boxes because I found two of these in another box. And those of you who don't know what these are, this is your adjuster for your brakes. You would have seen me wrestling with it, trying to get it back on the first wheel here. And these go on and these basically connect up to this lad here that you see me loosening and you adjust them all the time as the brakes wear down. And here I am with the two wheels back on and these in my hand. So it's always worthwhile to check all the boxes before you do these jobs. But I have got a little bit of relief on my hands because these are the wrong ones. These do not work at all. The ones that go on this tractor are completely different than these. Uh, these two ends are the same, but this is not like this at all. It's a long flatted tooth area. But the fact that they're wrong means I can complain about them and it takes all the concentration off the fact that I forgot to put them in. Now, the little front of this tractor, Hudson's just going to explain it here. Nope. So the next thing we're going to move on to is our front wheels. Um, now, I'm shaking this. There's a little bit of movement in it, but it's... It's not massive. Just take this off first. Right, I have new ones that have grease nipples here, which I find are far better, just to get the grease packed in around these. Next thing we're looking for now is a split key. The leg of it there. Just straighten that out for starters. It looks to me that that came out too easy. I wonder is the hub just loose? I'm gonna jack it up a little bit now and try to tighten it and see, will that fix that? There's a little bit of play. You see that play? Yeah, it's definitely there. Look, at it. we'll stick a socket on it and see what it does. There we are. That needs no bearing. That's tight. That just needs to be tightened. That's all that was wrong there. That doesn't need to come off. That's a good result. If you don't need to replace it, don't touch it. Um, I have the bearing kit there. If you ever need to put a bearing into it, it's not a big job. But for the amount of work this little tractor will be doing, I have a feeling that's going to be 100% okay. You can see the bearings moving in there and they all look to be quite good. I'll just show you here with the camera. You can see the bearings moving in there and everything looks to be nice and free. Well greased. I'm glad to see plenty of grease in there. So perhaps this little tractor was better looked after than I first thought. Because it does seem like it got a little bit of work done only there recently. And that's good to see. It's always good to see. I'm not going to put the cap back on that. There's the new cap there. That'll screw on. That's the screw on there. And there's the new grease nipple. I'm not going to tighten it up because I need to get a new split pin for there and I don't have that size, I'll take that with me to get it. But that'll finish that job off. There's a new cap, new grease nipple, Bob's your uncle. So again, we're on the far side here, very dark, I'm sorry about that. So the very same thing with this wheel, a little small bit of movement. And this here is loose, 
I can move it with my hand back and forth. So I'm going to do the very same thing again. There's actually no split pin in this one. And that's a disaster. That's the, probably the main reason why it is loosened. So I'll tighten this up. I'm not going to put a stud on there. I know there's one missing. Um, I do need to put two complete studs in that wheel and this one. And I have them here in a box uh, because someone has welded them from behind and looks horrendous. So I'll just put a brand new stud into them. Um, but for now it's okay. So I'm just going to tighten this up and see what happens. Not much of a tightening. That's it. That's the movement gone. All right, we're back and we've moved. We've been kicked out of the calving pen because calving season has officially started. First part of this was probably filmed about two weeks ago. Yeah, so we're putting it all together bit by bit. But now the next job we're going to do is we're going to actually remove this PTO in here because there's a seal gone in this PTO. It's leaking oil very badly at the minute. A very common thing. Um, shouldn't be too hard to fix either because there's a little seal in there. We just have to pop open these four studs here, pull the whole thing out. You can drain the oil out of it or you can face the tractor downhill as best you can um, and then open it that way. So that's what I'm going to do. It is facing downhill now. I'm going to undo these four bolts. I'm going to pull this shaft out. You can see the oil running out of it once I take off the cap. That's a sure sign the seal is gone. Oh, that ain't a great colour. That's definitely not a good colour. Lots of make. So this is our PTO shaft. In here we have our seal and our bearing. Now the bearing I've just looked at, and the bearing sometimes you have to replace as well, but the bearing actually is torn very, very freely in this. Don't hear any sounds, it shouldn't be there. So don't see a reason to actually change that. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Um, so how we get this seal out is we've got a little sword clip in here. I have to get a screwdriver in here and try to work that out. It's not one of the new style clips uh, that has two holes where you can put your pliers on and grab it and shrink it in and lift it straight out. It's one of the older types that's in this. It can be a bit of a nuisance to get out. That's the first task in hand, so let's get that out. Was easy. Let's quick clean. So we're ready now to remove the seal. So that's not a big job either. Just a little device. Get a big socket. That should be spot on. That's coming out there nicely. All right, so now turn this around. We've got our new seal here. New seal compared to the old seal is a bit different. This is a kind of a felt seal. Um, look at it, it's just moved on, new technology. It's got a lip in here now that it didn't have before. Um, but anyway, let's get the new one in. A little bit of oil just to help with the seat. So the lip goes inward. It's very important to try to get this in level. So there's a little sore clip in here that stops you from putting it in too far. That's it there. But that's all seated up there nice and tight against it, so we definitely know it's in the right place. So that's that job in. Nothing difficult about that. So you just screw on your cap. There we are. We just put our sore clip back in. Exactly the way we took it out. Right, stuff this hole for a second and stop any dirt from getting in. There we go. I want to clean up this edge. There's a little bit of gasket sealer here. Now my tub busted. I don't know why it busted, so I had to cut it <laughs> down the top. Just to get this sealer out, but this is fine, just to do it this way. I wasn't going to throw it out. 
I'll actually put a cap on that. It might actually keep. Just put it on my finger like this here. As long as it's on it, that's all that matters. Just line it all up. Right, so that's that job done. A nice job to get finished off. It's pouring rain now, so I can't really do any more this evening. I wanted to have it outside the shed because you guys can see it better. And um, when there's a bit of daylight rather than having it in here, although I have good lights in here, you just get a better visual of what I'm doing. There's nothing as bad as trying to watch something when it's too dark. So that's the job done. Brakes is done now. That seal is finished. I'm gonna push it back in here now this evening. I'm gonna put new oil in the back end of that. Very, very creamy. Moisture must have got in. Once moisture gets in, it turns that milky kind of color. So that top lift section there, you can see already from the day it came, is a different color. So I'd say what happened is somebody had been working in there, maybe the other one was cracked and water was getting in and that's why they put a new one on the top. Normally what can happen is the draft unit, as it is in this one, is completely seized. We have a new one here in the shed to put on. Um, but it can actually pull the bolts and it actually can crack the housing. And that's probably what happened. Um, so we will be taking that back off. I have a new gasket for that top cover. Um, we're going to have a proper look at it and fix that draft unit correctly and just leave it all right. All right, so it's the following day now. I got rained off the site yesterday, so couldn't do any more. I'm going to take off the diesel tank and I'm going to fit a new pipe here. This little pipe that goes up onto the diesel tank. Um, a brand new one for those because the treads is gone where it goes into the diesel tank there. So I'm going to tidy up all these pipes as well. There's a bit of rust, surface so rust on them. Um, just with a bit of wire wool or something like that, I'm going to spray it down then with diesel and stuff just to preserve them. I have to get in here, there, you can see it. There's two frost plugs in there. And this one here is sitting out um, and there's a bad water leak there. Don't know how I want to do that without taking off the whole steering column just to get at it. But maybe someone knows of an easy way to get that frost plug put back into place. It's only a little, little cap. Uh, but you have to hammer it in straight and I can see here on this one someone has hammered it in from an angle with a chisel and that's exactly why it's leaking. Another little thing I have to repair is that little hole there with a little bit of oil coming out and seeping down and um, that will be done as well. These little things I'll do off camera because they're not that terribly interesting. We'll fix all that stuff and have it ready for so the next time we do a video on this all that will be sorted. Another thing will be we'll have the bonnet on properly and hinge properly because I have new hinge bolts for that as well so I'll have that all done too. Maybe the next video will be Will it start? You never know. So we'll see what's going to happen. Sorry there has been a bit of a delay in these videos on putting it up with the Ferguson. But doing the best I can. It just I don't often get a lot of time to work on it. Um, but I will get more and more time now, maybe over the winter time. I don't know where, but I might. We have a new set of wheels for it. I'm not going to put them on probably close to the springtime because I want to just get the thing running first and started and all. And then we'll throw on the wheels. It'll only take a few minutes. So we have new wheels, rims and tyres. That'll be going on it. But I still have that deadline and I want my father to be able to get up on it and drive the tractor and enjoy it like the way he used to enjoy it years ago because that is what this is all about. So hopefully that day will come sooner rather than later. Another thing we just got here is we've got this cover for the battery. That cover just fits over the battery there. I have to bore out these two holes because only a remold is kind of a plastic material and put two rods down here to hold that in place. I got a phone call from Ronnie Martin. Ronnie Martin would be one of the guys in Martin's garage where I bought my tractor earlier on the year. He rang me back about two months ago, three months ago, and he said, we have a company that supply parts to us. I think they're called Quality Tractor Parts. Just hold on one second. I'm going to look it up here on my phone. QTP, Quality Tractor Parts Limited. I don't think I ever got anything of them before, but they supply parts to me to Martin's Garage, and they'd be watching my videos. And they said, hey, we're going to leave that out for that man. Time to come and pick it up. Appreciate what he's doing with the tractor trying to restore an old tractor so that's a gift from us to him so, so that was a really nice thing to do that's a lovely part to get because it can be quite hard to get and i was really really appreciative towards that there are some really really nice people out there we're missing a banjo boat for the back of this um auxiliary tank a fan managed to track one down straight away and the response we got we got several and several messages of people saying we have one here or we can make you one even as well it's great the level of generosity is out there so thank you so much to them we'll talk about the banjo boat and things 
and that guy because I can't remember his name now but we talk about that in the next video another good group to join in with if you're walking on a Ferguson or something like this is friends of the Ferguson they're on Facebook and when I bought this here I got contacted with two guys that are in the vintage club um, society they contacted me and they told me to join that Facebook group and you know what they're a brilliant share of lads um, anything you want to know just ask a question and they're more than happy to help you they'll just give you abundance of knowledge world of information that you need if you're a store and a tractor one thing i will say about the brake shoes in case someone asks do you see that little 10 mil boat that was coming out well in the kit i got i got springs um to fix them shoes on now some people say them 10 mil bolts were added after and it should be the springs that's on it i don't know i only found this out after when i had the whole thing done but i heard from a couple of different people that them 10 mil bolts actually were the thing and there was no springs on some of them so is that right? Is that wrong? I don't know. If it is a thing that that's wrong, then it's not hard for me to open that back up again and put the springs because I have the springs for it. So comment down in the comment section if you know something about that, but I think it's okay the way it is. But if not, let me know in the comment section below and I'll have a look at it again. Anyway, folks, thanks very much for watching as always, if you haven't so Now it's time to do it. Give us a like, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and on TikTok. Until the next one, talk to you again.